So Robert Sala this morning uh, said he was blindsided, fired by the Jets. So, and we warned you, if you go to London, where Woody Johnson was the former ambassador to UK, he's got all his bougie billionaire buddies in the stadium, ex-Jet Sam Darnold beats you, something's going to happen, and it did this morning. So in the moment, for all you alphas out there, it feels good, yeah. It's like going to the batting cage when you're in a bad mood. Take a few whacks. Somebody's got to pay for this. Congrats, you just fired the most competent coach on your staff. Nat Hackett is probably the worst OC in the league. He's still there because Aaron makes sure he's there. So this will be the fifth head coach, head coach, interim coach in 11 years. Does it sound like a well-run business? If you owned a company, you are your fifth CEO in 11 years. Would you be a well-run company? For the record, if they beat the Bills on Monday Night Football, that terrible Robert Sala coach, they would have been in first place. <laughs> With way past his prime Aaron Rodgers. So ask yourself, what is easily the best part of the Jets? The defense. The part he coaches. Robert Sala didn't whiff on a quarterback and a left tackle in the first round. Forcing the organization to hand all the power to Aaron Rodgers. Robert Sala didn't mishandle the Hassan Reddick mess. Again, I know it feels good. Jets, it felt good to beat the Patriots. It feels good to fire the coach. It, it always feels good for poorly run businesses to fire people, and that will solve it. And um, go ahead, Colin. He didn't get along with Aaron Rodgers. Well, we told you that a couple of weeks ago, and you pushed back on your Go Green Reddit boards when we told you they're not getting along. It's not rosy. So now suddenly you're an expert on the relationship between Robert Saul and Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think they get along well. I don't think Robert Sala, a little bit too much ego, he just couldn't keep things to himself. Remember when he said this is an inexcused absence at the podium during minicamp? Robert, keep it to yourself. Remember when he said Aaron Rodgers will not play in the preseason? Aaron was mystified by that. Keep it to yourself. When he banged on Aaron Rodgers, the best cadence quarterback in the NFL probably my entire life, Aaron fired back, coach, vanity, keep it to yourself. We all know about offense, defense, special teams, the three phases of football. Here's the fourth. When you have an old, rich, prickly quarterback, monitor what you say at the podium. He wasn't very good at the podium. Belichick gets made fun of for saying on to Cincinnati. But Belichick and Brady never went to dinner in 20 years. But at the podium, they co-parented. They never embarrassed each other. They always were on the same message. Sala and Aaron weren't. Well, Colin, Aaron's difficult to get along with. Yeah, I know. Ask Mike McCarthy, but that's the deal. You brought him in to save the franchise. Don't humiliate him. Don't embarrass him. Yes, he can be sensitive. So the interim coach is Jeff Albrecht, who was the loud guy on hard knocks, former player. Kyle Shanahan tried to hire him at one point, kind of an alpha guy. He could win. I mean, interim coaches like substitute teachers, everybody loves them. Uh, he could win. I, I wouldn't doubt it. But in the end, you're on your fifth coach, head coach or interim coach in 11 years. This is what you are as a franchise. If your company had the fifth CEO, would you think, oh, it is humming here. And I understand firing coaches. Andy Reid got fired in Philadelphia. Sometimes, as Pat Riley says, you need a new voice. This is a team that is good at one thing, the one thing Sala coaches, and they could be in first place by Monday night. Just think about that. This is, this is not a team you know, like what you're watching in, in, in Carolina. This is not a team that's hopeless. The roster's pretty good. Sala had his side playing well. I mean, can you imagine if Hassan Reddick would have been in, in, in the building? How good this defense would have been? It's already good now. And here's the other thing. Um, you know, I've, I've been talking about this for years. 
is owners now are so rich. They didn't, I mean, used to be even 10 years ago, they weren't all billionaires. A guy would have a seven, $800 million net worth. They would give a coach an extra year, but the, the owners now are all multi-billionaires. So firing a coach, firing a, firing a staff is a rounding error. They just don't care. But by Monday night, the Jets could be in first place. And so, so, I mean, if you want to know why Kansas City keeps winning, it's all that institutional knowledge and that momentum and that culture that they don't constantly disrupt. In their division, the Chargers had oh, D'Anthony Lynn, Brandon Staley, Jim Harbaugh. They're restarting the engine every couple of years. How many coaches have the Raiders had since Andy Reid got there? Broncos are on their second or third. So, like, I, I am not a fan of blowing everything up. I always ask the question, if you're going to fire a coach, this is why I've kind of supported Matt Eberflus. Does the coach know his side of the ball? Sala is great with motivation, and he's great with defense. So he's gone, and maybe the alpha, you know, the ex-player, a tough guy, maybe it works. He's got kind of a Dan Campbell feel to him. I got nothing against him, don't know him. Kyle Shanahan's a smart guy. He likes him. It may work. But this will not be a job that everybody signs up for. There's going to be potentially Trevor Lawrence is going to need a coach. Maybe Dak will need a coach. Maybe Joe Burrow will need a coach. You're going to this mess? I'm going to move my wife, my daughters cross country to Woody Johnson. But again, hey, get your aluminum bat out. Go to the batting cage. It feels good today. Get those wax in. You are a franchise. Am I supposed to believe Woody Johnson didn't talk to Aaron Rodgers? Really? Didn't give him a heads up? Really? I, I can't believe that. Because Woody Johnson in the offseason, all he talked about, we got to get the offense right. Well, who runs the offense? Aaron Rodgers. You didn't give him a heads up? You didn't say, uh, Aaron, I'm really disappointed. I mean, it's Tuesday now. You had over 48 hours. You had a lot of time. Aaron never got tipped on this? I mean, go ask Mike McCarthy. Once Aaron goes on, you know, his darkness retreat, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the official one in Oregon. When, when he turns dark, and we talk about this all the time, you're, you're done as a coach. So and I, I think over this past week, we showed it on the air. Aaron went dark during that game. He's doing the hand motion to Nat Hackett, hurry up and get the plays in. He turned on the staff. So, again, it makes you feel good to go to the batting cage, and it makes you feel good to pretend on your Reddit board that Aaron didn't have anything to do with it. Now what you're going to do, it's going to be like LeBron. They're going to go out now. Aaron's going to distance himself from this. This is what LeBron does. Totally distance yourself. I had no idea. And, uh, remember, agents get in all the story breakers in this business. They get their news from agents. And so, you know, you're, you're going to find there's going to be a lot of positioning on this story. It caught Aaron by total surprise. I had no idea. And his friends will relay the message. I have a hard time believing Woody Johnson fires Robert Sala, the most competent coach on his staff, the one guy who's great at his job and didn't tip Aaron at all. I was told Aaron and Sala were buddies. I mean, if they're buddies, you're going to fire my best friend at Fox. <laughs> you're not going to call and say, yeah, something happened. I mean, I, I don't buy that. If, if, if you're telling somebody they're valuable and you know they're really close with the guy on the staff, you're not going to tip him off? I mean, believe what you want to believe. Believe what you want to believe. But um, fifth coach, 11 years, you could be in first place by Monday night. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.